we don't really have money uh, to have lots of things in development and lots of things to fall down. Television, film, um, I'm not an expert, but sometimes in, in these industries, the cheapest thing is the script. That's not to devalue the writers. The, the most important thing, obviously, but actually to go out and make a television drama or a, a movie can cost hundreds of thousands of pounds, millions of pounds even. So I think in that industry, that's why sometimes there's a lot of development of scripts and lots of different scripts at different stages. And then the hard thing is to drum up the money to actually green light a project. So that's why there's a difference. There are other reasons I won't go into, and uh, which we can discuss about development in the film and television industries. Um, but in radio, it's a different, uh, a different system and a different relationship, which is why a lot of writers like it. And you know, we have writers that write for television, or even for film, who also enjoy writing for radio. Um, and sometimes, the reason why they like writing for radio is because of the intimacy of that relationship with the producer, stroke director, and also because their project gets done quicker in most cases. Okay, uh, any other questions? Just one last one. Yeah. Um, you mentioned earlier you sometimes do readings for BBC Seven. Um, when it comes to adaptations of novels, how do you determine what's suitable for a reading or what's suitable for um, an adaptation into a play? And what sort of advice do you give to novelists if they approach yourself saying, I have a novel and I would like it you know, to become a radio drama? Right. Well, um, first of all, we have a researcher who works in our department who keeps in contact with publishers and finds out about publications long before the, um, uh, they're, they're published. Um, but all our producers, I, I don't actually work on the reading side, but there's a few producers in our department that do. And they're constantly reading books, looking at um, publishers' proofs to see what's coming out. And, you know, writers or publishers send us um, books and they make a decision on that. Um, we don't, we wouldn't tend to do a reading of an unpublished novel. Um, it tends to be published or something that's going to be published. Um, with nonfiction, again, sometimes it's not always a new book. Or even for a book at bedtime, it's not always necessarily a new book. It can be something that's been around for a little while. Book of the Week tends to be a new book or something that's come out fairly recently or is about to come out. Um, with dramatizations of novels, what tends to happen is that the producers tend to make suggestions about books to dramatize. Sometimes writers will approach us um, and say, why don't you dramatize this? And what we want to know from the writer is two things. Why we should dramatize that book, why it will work for, say, the Radio 4 audience. But even, well, as important, we want to know what their angle is, how they would do that book. Because we could all agree, let's say, that Sunset Song, for example, great Scottish novel, uh, is a great Scottish novel and would be great for the radio. But what we need to know is how a particular writer would would deal with it. Are you a novelist? Not myself, no. No, right. You know somebody is, yeah. Well, again, you know, either through the publisher or directly, they can always get in touch, write a letter or email, and then um, send in their book or something, you know, and we'll have a look at it. We don't um, accept manuscripts by email, unsolicited manuscripts by email. We prefer them in hard copy. Um, but you can always email us or write to us if you've got an inquiry about anything. Okay, I think that's us. Uh, David, thanks very much uh, Thank for today. It was great um, to find out all about the radio drama industry. Um, yeah, just show our appreciation. Thank you. Okay.